levels will be coming at different heights. Long ball to Shearer, Shearer out to Beckham, Beckham down the line, crosses it for Owen, and Owen into the onion bag, get in there. Hello everybody and welcome to my soccer skills school. You, a footballer's born or are they made? I don't know. Nor do I, but what I do know is practice makes perfect and no matter how good you are, you'll never stop learning. Or you, concentrate at the back. My name's Kieran. And my name's Danny. And in our opinion, there's no better run on the ball than our lead hero, Harry Kewell. Well, they've obviously forgotten about Ryan Giggs. And now Giggs gets it out. And I'm Andrew, by the way. Hi, my name's Regan. And mine's Farid. We love the passing of David Beckham. Yes, David Beckham. And York again has escaped his marker. Hello, my name's Kevin. And now that Stephen Allen's gone to stay, I miss his skills. And then again. Oh, away from. Oh, good ball. Red Knight. They call me Stephen. And life is small, but size isn't everything. And I'd like to play like that other League United nipper, Lee Boyer. Boyer's made a run, and he'll get a second try for this. Lee Boyer! My name's Adrian. Respect to Dennis Bergkamp. Hi, I'm Jamie. I model myself on Nigel Martin. Hi, my name's David. And I say Jim Frank Ozola, he's cool. Hi, I'm Richard. 
And I want to learn how to take a free kick like Ian Hart. Hi, my name is Kieran. I would like to play for Ireland, like my hero, Roy Keane. And obviously this lot have forgotten how good guys are going to play. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm a striker and I want to score more goals like Dwight York. I'm Michael. I'm the teacher's pet. My favourite player is Mike Hall. So there's the squad. As you can see, they can play a bit already. By the time I finish with them, they'll be even better. Over the next 90 minutes, I'll teach you everything you need to know to become a complete player. We'll start with the basics, kicking and passing. Go on to some fancy stuff, dribbling and ball control, some tips on goalkeeping and defending. Best way to head a ball, free kicks, penalties, and some games to improve your skills. You can even spend some time with me off the park, at work, rest and play. Side to side, facing your left. Knees up at the front. And heels at your back. Try to keep your knees quite close together. Many young teams that I've watched think they can just come out of the dressing room and go straight into a match without even stretching the legs. This, however, increases the risk of injury and also puts the player at his own disadvantage. Why do you think that is, Michael? Well, if your muscles are tight and cold, then you won't react quickly and you could pull out air and muscle. That's correct. That's why all professional teams go through a strict warm-up routine before every game. At Liverpool we go out for about 20 minutes for a series of exercises and stretches to get the heart rate up and blood pumping through the cold muscles. By the time the whistle goes, we are prepared, both mentally and physically. Don't take my word for it, I'll be calling on a medical expert to back me up when necessary. Cue the doc. So what's the point of a warm-up? Well, the reason we do it is to increase the blood flow to muscles and also, importantly, to prepare the mind for exercise. It's a bit like starting a car from cold. It takes a few minutes for the engine to warm up and reach its most efficient operating temperature. Blood is the body's own petrol. During exercise, it's pumped into muscles, increasing the rate of oxygen to the cells, enabling muscles to operate at their best. We all warmed up then? Yeah! Right, the first thing that I want to talk to you about is a vital part of the footballer's trade, the ball. I used to kick around with a tennis ball in the school playground. I think if you can master a small ball early on, it's easier to deal with the full-size ball used in the professional game. Hey! These lads and lasses have grown up using mostly a size 2 ball. It's filled with foam which means it's heavier and, as you can see on the right, it hardly bounces. I think players aged between 11 and 14 should practice with the size 4 ball and that's the one my class will be using. It's important to work on your ball skills and be comfortable with the ball at your feet. After all, you're no use to anyone if you can't play. Here are a few exercises to help you improve those silky skills. Okay, first of all we're going to start with a bit of jogging on the ball, so off we go. Pass it from side to side, off you go. And when you get a bit more confident you can start going a bit faster and moving forwards and backwards.
The next thing we're doing is using the inside and outside of the same foot, keeping your, the opposite leg, using yourself for balance. So, like that. Okay, try to do with both feet. Off you go. You get good at it, you can move forwards and the best ones you can do it backwards as well. Well done, Kieran. Right, the next exercise is rolling the ball from one foot to the other, keeping your body upright, okay? So the best ones can get faster and faster. Okay, so off we go. Well done, Kieran. One step further on that one is just using one foot to roll it, next to stop it, roll it and stop it again, okay? So off we go. Well done, try to keep your head up as you're doing it, so you don't bump into anyone again. Well done. Okay, the next one's the roll and then the step over. So you roll it with one leg, step over it with the other, and then bring it back, and then do it again. Football is, of course, essentially a kicking game. Sometimes you need to blast the ball. Other times a gentle pass can open up a defence. It's that blend of power and accuracy that is the key to the whole art of football. We start with the basics, short passes over 10 yards. The inside of the foot has the widest surface area, so use this for accuracy. You can start using different ways to control and pass, but remember, accuracy is still the key. Keepers too need to develop these short passing skills. So much for accuracy, but how do you kick a ball as hard as possible? Show us a foot, Doc. To get maximum power into a shot, it's best to kick the ball with the front of your foot. When kicking a ball in this position, all the bones lock up and literally become one unit. So when you strike the ball, you're using a solid piece of bone. I'm now going to demonstrate how I strike the ball with power by striking through the middle of the ball with my laces and my foot. Notice how I follow through to ensure more power. Sometimes in a game you need to swerve a ball. The way you do this is by hitting the outside of the ball with the inside of your foot and making sure your run up comes from the left so you're actually hitting across the ball. The opposite to that is hitting the ball with the outside of the foot on the left side of the ball. For this you need a straighter run up and to be cutting across the left hand side of the ball. One pass that's used quite commonly is the backspin pass which is used to get in behind defences and without it running out of play, just to check back to make it easier for the player to control. The way we do that is, again, put your foot to the side of the ball and chop down at the bottom, creating backspin, so the ball stops at the other end. Watch how Giggs comes from nowhere to accept Beckham's brilliantly weighted pass. Professionals call it give and go. And here are some more exercises to help you improve your pass and move routine. The job isn't done with just one pass. 
you've always got to be ready for the next piece of action, so keep on your toes. Different types of practice will hammer home this point to young players. This Liverpool goal combines everything we've just demonstrated. A move from the back develops some classic give-and-go passing in midfield, all with the inside of the foot for pinpoint accuracy. Everyone's on their toes, ready to receive the ball. Jamie Redknapp chops down on a long ball to create backspin, enabling Hegem to control it more easily. Ince then makes the ball bend by hitting it on the side. Fowler, who started the move on the halfway line, has made up 50 yards. Thanks for the goal, lads. I think my first memories of, of football was uh, in the back garden with my dad and my brothers, um, just kicking a ball to each other. My two brothers are um, eight and nine years older than me. I think having two older brothers definitely um, helped you know, me. Um, I was always striving to get as good as they are. My Deeside Primary Schools, I uh, scored you know, 12, 15 in my first year, and that was when I was you know, three years younger than everyone. In the second year, I think I scored 45, and then in the third year was, was my main year, was, uh, was when I scored 92. I broke Ian Mustard's record when I was when I was playing for Deeside Primary School, so I don't think he's too bothered about that record. As long as I don't beat his, his Liverpool record, I don't think he'll mind. For my dad to come and watch me wherever I played was, was a great buzz, and more than anyone, I wanted to impress him more than the manager or anything. I wanted you know to, to make my dad in a good mood. Before every every game, I'd, I'd look over my dad, and you know he'd. He'd tell me if there's any scouts, I think he knew everyone's face by then. Um, you know, I was getting a few scouts coming to watch me virtually every game when I was, you know, 9, 10, 11 year old. I went to Everton for, you know, a training week. I went to Man United, I, I spoke to, to Alex Ferguson. I went to Arsenal and I met George Graham before one of their games that I watched. And then I went to Chelsea and Glenn Hoddle was the manager, I met him before the game. But really, there was Liverpool was, was the main one that I wanted to sign for. I liked the staff, I liked the players. Um, and I liked everything about the club. I have more trouble signing average players than I ever did signing one of the world's best players. He just wanted to play for Liverpool. I think we worked very hard to make sure we didn't undo his talents. We didn't coach him too much, we didn't give him too much instruction. Um, it's more guidance and, and, and interest and understanding. You have to understand the genius. But just because I'd signed for Liverpool didn't mean I could skip school. We're playing uh, replay in the Welsh Cup and, and I was refereeing and Mike came up and I said something to the effect of, you know, if you don't get stuck in today, you'll get my boot up your backside or something very, very similar. And, I, and I, he had this big grin on his face, he said, well, you better join the queue, sir, because me dad and me two brothers are waiting to do the same thing. To make it in the professional world of any sport, you need to have that cockiness, that competitive edge, that uh, without being too much over the top, but it was there. The way he said it, it wasn't cheeky. And there we I think we won 4 1 or something. Mike scored three goals and he comes off after him and he goes, that all right? See? And coming up in part two of my autobiography, I'll tell you about my time at Lurshaw, where I got on the goal scoring trail for England schoolboys. There's nothing more guaranteed to set the pulse racing than a player in full flight with the ball. Ginola easily passed the defender and passed Blackmore. And round to Zayo! Oh, that's a wondrous goal from a wonderful player. And can Arsenal break? Can they put the icing on the cake? It's over, Mars with Burkamp outside him to the right. And he slips it into Burkamp. What a brilliant goal! Come on, kids, I'll show you how to dribble. The 
first thing we're doing is dribbling the ball with the in and outside of the same foot, keeping your head up and keeping as low as possible so you can sprint off at any time. Okay, go on. Just keep tapping it in front of you. Try to do it with the outside and inside. That's it, keep going in front of you. That's perfect. That's it. Well done. When you're confident using one foot, try dribbling using the inside and outside of both feet. Well done, Damien. We're now going to take that on a step further by putting a defender in there to jockey him. The aim here is to keep the ball under close control. The defender's job is not to win the ball, but to put the opponent under a bit of pressure. There are two different ways to beat a man. Firstly, you can use your speed, which is obviously just pushing the ball past the player and actually going around the other side and running onto it. The second way is the one that I'm going to show you and is to use a different trick. So firstly, I'll run up to Aid, throw the leg over, and go the other way. Off you go. <laughs> You're supposed to go the other way. So when you're actually doing this exercise, Kieran, it's best when you actually throw the leg over is to really bend down on here, which not only throws the defender that way, but also gives you a good push-off point for, for when you go away from him. So if you just practice that, against your partner. Okay, off you go. That's it, that's it. Brilliant. Well, oh, you're right. With your right leg, yeah. Go around it like that, and then take it with your left one. That's it, okay. You can do it slowly. Kieran will do it slow with you. That's it, now throw that one over. Perfect, that's perfect, well done. And now a real fancy one, the double step over. So you run up to your man, once over there, once over there, and then take it. Okay, always trying to keep as low as possible. Well done, it's better. It's the second one that's gonna fool him, but that's brilliant, that's the best one yet. If you think that was fancy, check some of these out. To add a bit of spice, these exercises are best done in narrow channels, with the defenders tackling for real. Don't be afraid to take your opponent on, or to try out new tricks. Remember, the more you practice, the better you become. His legs are too small to put it through him. Brilliant, that's brilliant, that is Michael. Well done. My main job in football is scoring goals, but there are some people who are determined to stop me from doing that. 
I'm talking, of course, about goalkeepers. A good goalie needs to be agile, alert, and ready for the unexpected. That's a good save by Seaman. Positioning is vital. Angles are just as important as agility, and you must study where the top keepers position themselves. The very best can spread confidence throughout the whole side. But keepers should not be just shot stoppers. An alert goalie can turn defence into attack in a matter of moments. Here, David James's quick long throw sets me on my way. In just 11 seconds, the ball is in the back of the net. Here to help me today is one of my all-time heroes, Neville Southall, who's the most capped player for Wales. And he's here to help Jamie with a few tips on how to become a great keeper. Tell us what you're going to do today, Neville. Well, we'll give Jamie a good warm-up, and then we'll do a few exercises in the goal. Basic body position, teach him how to catch the ball, and we'll do a few little exercises in the goal to finish off. OK, just have a little stretch. Nice and wide, Jamie. Nice and wide. Switch your body right round, Jamie. Without dropping it, mate. If you can. Well done. Nice and easy, mate. We can change the other way. Come on, Jamie. Hold on, mate. Just rock, Jamie. Rock. Let yourself go. Let yourself go and let your legs come up a little bit. OK? Brilliant, Jamie. Well done. Just use your feet, Jamie. Use your feet. Use your feet, get in line with the ball. See how you're catching it now. Right, it's going to put you off balance. So if you look at your body shape now, your shoulders are behind your heels. Right, so if it's coming into you there, just let it hit your chest. Okay, and it won't unbalance you. So from there, if you can bring your hands up. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. But you must get yourself in line, and your body must be balanced. That means being slightly more forward. Okay. So your nose is in front of your toes, mate, okay? Hold on, Jamie. Okay. See? Let it hit you. So when your hands come up, from here to here, Jamie, it's got to come up like that, okay? Anything there has got to come there, so you can see it. What you're doing at the moment, right? Your hands are coming up like that. Boom. It's knocking you off balance. So you're going back, and the ball's dropping that way. Right? But if you're playing a shot in there, and I'm taking it there, then I'm balanced. And even if it does come out, then my body weight will take me forward. Yeah. But at the moment, you're fighting all your body weight because I can push it over so easy. Yeah? yeah? Understand? And the other thing is, when I threw you the ball, and you to catch it there, where is it? Head. Yeah, so where's your eyes? Should be there, and that's why you drop it. Most important two things are your eyes. Just take the ball always in front of you that side, always in front of you that side. Okay, so your eyes got to be there. Everything's got to be there, Jamie, okay? So when I say look up, use your, use your eyes, a lot of kids don't do it. They make saves like that, where they can't see the ball, or they do that, and they drop it. This is the basics of everything. If you go backwards sitting down, then when I stand you up from being there, right, what you'll do, your body will turn like that, Jamie, right? And the distance you cover will be this. If you lie down now from that, from that position, right? Really lie down, Jamie, which would be that position, right? There's your mark, Jamie. Okay, there's your mark on the line. If you stand up where you were before, right? And you turn your body going backwards, that's how much you've lost, Jamie. You've lost what? Well, four foot. You've lost four foot because of that one technique. And you see, it, Everyone does it, right? Loads of people do it these days. Start from here, instead of getting the ball there, Jamie, push your angle, they'll turn the body because the body weight's going back and the handle has to be going away from the ball. If you can play into the ball all the time so you can see it, then you'll be all right. You'll make more saves doing that than you'll ever make doing that. Great save, Jamie. Great save, mate. Well done. OK, Jamie, so this is where the great goalkeepers are in the corner, one-on-ones. I'm about to take on young Jamie, so I need to remind myself just how keepers operate when a striker's clean through. It's a game of cat and mouse, one-on-one, -on -one, you against him. You've got to make him think. 
So what we're going to try and do now is stay as big as you can, on your feet as long as you possibly can, and try and show them which way you want him to go. Dictate the play to the striker, instead of the striker dictating it to you. Let's go. Stand up, Jamie. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> Lucky Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> there you are! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's two goals. Can make him do something. Huh? Go on, Jamie, go on, Jamie, go on, Jamie. Well done, mate, well stood up, well done, Jamie. You stood up, and it's hit you. It's class, well done, mate. Just try and keep your eyes on the ball all the time, okay? Don't let him be fooled. Stay on your feet, Jamie. Stay on your feet if you can't win it. Great save, Jamie. Well done, mate. Well done. What a good save. Stay on your feet, Jamie. Stay on your feet. Stay on your feet. What I tell you. Go. <laughs> like that. So how will Jamie fare against some long-range efforts? Oh! Come on, Jamie. Footwork and everything, mate. Well done. Let's get in line with the ball. That was inches. You lucky man. Stand up, Jamie, stand up. Well done, mate. See how you've landed. Come here. When you're coming into the dive, it should be there. Boom. What are you doing at the moment because you're right handed? Because you're trying to do it like that. Your whole body's turned, it's ended up turning like that. You're facing the wrong way. Always trying to leave with your left. If you can, yeah. Get in there! Well done, he's 13. Game set and match Owen. There's no finer feeling in football than putting the ball in the back of the net, but scoring goals is more than just striking it lucky. In a match you get few opportunities to score, so you must practice hard to learn to put away those chances. Trust me. And now Fowler. Well spotted there. If you want to be in, great chance for Michael Owen. Oh, he doesn't miss chances like that. And Redknapp can get Owen going. Michael Owen, 2-1. Now he has got his fifth against Forest this season. And here comes Owen. And there's a chance here for Liverpool. And Michael Owen has scored. It's the breath of fresh air they really needed. I recommend you start off with narrow goals, which encourages pinpoint accuracy in your shooting. First with a stationary ball, and then with a moving ball. It may seem obvious, but you can't score if you don't hit the target, so practice your accuracy before adding power to your shooting. In a match, you've just got to concentrate on the biggest area that the keeper leaves and then try to put the ball into it. Well done, Reagan. What a goal that is. Great finish, Joe. That's perfect, Andy. Well done, Rich. To gain power in your shot, your kicking foot should follow through the ball. Sometimes you only have to pass the ball into the net because if you put it in that corner, no keeper in the world's going to save it. And here's Michael Owen, brilliant! Remember, keep your eyes on the ball, not the goal. Good finish, Joe. Got that one off to a tee. Well done, Adrian. Tries to keep it low and hit it across him. Sometimes if the keeper's anticipating you going one way, you can also put it in the other corner. One-on-ones are all about instinct and reaction, but remember that as a striker, you are in control. 
If the keeper makes the first move, take the appropriate action. Okay, now what we're doing is hunting in pairs. We're going to be laying the ball into Simon. Again, he can knock it off to either side. We're going to be trying to hit the far post, just inside the far post. If we're either side, then we can hit the post or the keeper saves it and the partner comes in for the rebound. It's amazing how many goals are scored from rebounds. But when you get an opportunity, you have to react quickly or the chance will go begging. Alan Shearer was 20 odd yards away from goal when this shot was struck and watch how he reacts. Go on Rich, well done, that's what we're looking for, see if we can get a few more of them. That's it Kieran, I wanted that goal, that's it, low and hard across. Don't need any rebounds. One Kieran, low and hard. Now the striker's goals. A striker must always be able to improvise. The shot and the chip is brilliant from Carboni. He knew exactly what he was doing. But remember, always have room. Well, you could watch football for 30 years and not see a finish quite as cheeky as that. And apparently Canu does this all the time in training. In 1991, I enrolled at the FA School of Excellence at Lillishall for specialised football tuition, but it meant I had to say goodbye to my school in Harden. When Michael made it to Lillishall, we were very pleased for him. You're always proud uh, to see a lad go to a, a school of excellence, but you'd, you'd love to have him here for those two years. Man. I was accepted at Lillishall when I was 14 years old, and that was a, a great experience. I played for England schoolboys. I ended up uh, breaking the record which was set by uh, Nick Barnby um, and I managed to score 12 in, uh, in 8 games so that was a great achievement. Who else would it be to pass with his second goal of the night? It's Michael Owen. With a chance for the hat trick here, Michael Owen, great stop by the keeper. He still hasn't got there though, and Owen will complete his hat trick. Remember the name, Michael Owen. When I was given the match ball against Belgium, um, you know, all the lads signed in. It was the first one I got, I've got that at home. Keep my match balls mainly under the bed. I got about five within a few months and could uh, afford to, to frame them all. I think the uh, goal against Scotland for England schoolboys was probably the best goal I've ever scored. Certainly not the most important goal because I think everyone knows that that'd be the one against Argentina. But um, you know, I beat a couple more men and I ran from you know a halfway line. The finish was a bit closer to the top corner as well, so that was another one of my, one of my best memories um, with the under 15s. I knew he'd be a very very good player, but I really didn't think that he would make the impact he has made. I was never you're never sure with young players, you know, how they're going to take the next step up. And that's always the big question. And the next step for me was Liverpool's FA Youth Cup winning side. The Youth Cup win was the, the major stepping stone for Michael. Um, it got Michael noticed. I think the Youth Cup was the time. I mean, I think it became obvious to everybody in the football club that we had somebody special. Putting it in the vicinity of Owen. Something's always likely to happen when he's around there. He's won the ball back. Now it's Quinn. Owen with it. Quinn goes alone. Great save. And there's Owen. Well, that's a goal-scoring glimpse into the future. Obviously, the coaching staff knew Michael, Michael's capabilities, um, but to actually produce it on such a stage got him noticed, and it just went from strength to strength. Football at the highest level suits Michael Owen down to the ground. There are no fears, there are no self-doubts. I'm not really surprised at Michael's success. Michael was so uniquely talented that he, he has been able to learn his trade, actually doing his trade at the very, very top. This is Owen. Taken in his stride, 
Shamok trying not to bring him down. It's still Michael Owen. He scored a wonderful goal. What makes a really great footballer? Well, a lot of people often ask me that, but I'd say one of the main things is the ability to control a ball, and that's what we're going to be concentrating on now. On our bodies, there are many different areas where we can control the ball. We can do it on our thighs, chest, inside and outside of the foot, and even on the shoulder. And with me to help out is Simon Clifford from the Brazilian Soccer Schools. If we're talking about ball control, can you remember a goal you scored in the World Cup? I think it was against um, Argentina. You remember that one? Yep. There's probably no better example than that of a good first touch. This is Owen. Taken in his stride. Shamot trying not to bring him down. It's still Michael Owen. He scored a wonderful goal. Right, first up is controlling the ball on your chest and a volley back to your partner. Off you go, kids. Having mastered using the inside of the foot, I encourage the gang to pass with both the outside of the foot and the laces of the boot. OK, off you go, four in. Well done. That's it. On the outside of your foot as well, Regan. Well done, brilliant. Well done. Can you do it on left? And then right. Well done. And right, then left. That's it. And then all the same. When controlling the ball with the chest, it's important to cushion the ball. Remember to keep your eyes on the ball at all times. And don't forget to pass back to your partner should be accurate too. <laughs> well done. Can you see that there? Yeah. Can you do it again? Yeah, his brother was doing it before. <laughs> In a match, the ball can come to you at different heights and at different speeds. So it is vital for you to practice control from all angles. And that gave the gang a chance to spring a few surprises on me. Come on, Kev, give me your tester. <laughs> what are these lads like? <laughs> Who taught them how to spin it? Yes. Yeah. Come on. Hey, Kieran. <laughs> oh, she's in the way. Come here, Tester, Kev. Yeah. I'll spin it back to you. <laughs> Stop while I'm on fire. Almost a fifth of all goals in the Premiership are headers. Fowler! 2-0! It might be a Fowler flick, or a well-timed Sheringham run and jump. The far post is a frequent target for crossers. And watch out for Sol Campbell creeping up at free kicks. There's Campbell! All good headers are brave, determined, possess excellent timing. Right then, hands up who likes heading? Yeah. Well you're not on your own, some of the great players have actually confessed that they hate heading the ball. In my granddad's day, some players blamed the heavy ball for causing brain damage. But even with today's lighter balls, it's still essential to head the ball with the forehead. A message the doctor keeps trying to get into my thick skull. 
we just take the top off here, you can see that this part of bone is very thick. If you look at my fingers, it's nearly an inch thick. The area where you shouldn't head the ball is the side. The bone here is very thin and will cause you pain. Many youngsters are scared of heading, so it's important to gain confidence by getting the feel of the ball on the forehead and trying to eliminate the fear factor. Having built up confidence, you must develop technique. Small jumps will help you time your headers. Okay, taking this on to the next level now, I'm going to be feeding Foreen with the ball. She's going to be again arching her back and trying to get as much power as possible. Well done. So try to get your feet, if it's too long, then try to get your feet back to head it. And if it's too short, move in and head it down there, yeah? That's it, well judged. Well done. Brilliant. You want to throw it to me again? again? Most headed goals require you to head the ball down, so this is a good way to develop that skill. Again. And last one. One way to build up strength are these backbending exercises. Although children under 10 should avoid doing these, as their backs are not strong enough. In a match, the ball will come at all angles, and you need to be agile and alert to cope with the varied height and pace. This is an ideal way to practice. Get him! Here he is! Come on, Steve! Right, well during this exercise, it's always important to keep your eye on the ball because you know where the keeper is. You don't even have to look at him, you can just see him out the corner of your eye. Now depending on the, the flight and the pace of the ball is where you actually put it mainly. If the ball's coming at quite a fast pace then you don't even have to put much onto it. Whereas if it's been floated in, as if it's been floated in, you've got to really put the pace on it yourself with your head. Okay, off we go. Well done. All the balls will be coming at different heights and at a different pace. So you've got to try to adjust your body to doing with that. So if it comes in hard, all you have to do is direct the header. You don't have to put any extra pace on it. Whereas if it's been a floater like that one, that's perfect. You've got to try to put pace on it yourself. Oh, nobody's picked up Michael Owen! OK, to put this into a match situation now, we're going to get Simon to cross the ball. Hopefully he'll, he'll land perfectly on the head. I'm going to be on my toes, waiting for the ball to come in. What a save. Perfect, Michael, well done. Well adjusted, Stephen, that's brilliant, that. The only thing I would say there, Kieran, is I'd, I'd wait until the ball's actually played before I started moving. You had just jogged in there and then, you, then he crossed it and you were standing before, and you stood there, heading like that. If you're actually moving onto the ball, then you can see and then you can put more power on it. That's perfect, that's absolutely perfect. Right back in, the keeper's got no chance. If you head it down, well done, Mike, that's brilliant. Great header. Most professional clubs play skill games such as these in training. I certainly do for Liverpool and England. And apart from being good fun, they also improve your touch and make you a better player. OK, 
Okay, make sure everyone has a touch in the team now and no heading before it goes over. Set. This game is perfect for increasing confidence on the ball. When the gang had shown me what they could do, it was time for me to discover a Brazilian brand of football I had never seen before. Simon, you imported this game of football de Salon into this country. Could you tell me some of the background about it? Yeah, well, a few years ago, I was lucky enough to become friends with a Brazilian player, Janinho, who at the time was at Middlesbrough, and he did some coaching with me in Leeds. And after a while, he said to me, when do you do your football de Salon? And I, I said, you know, what is football de Salon? I'd never heard of it. And he told me that all of the players in Brazil play this as children, it's a compulsory part of the school curriculum. It's got great little touches, hasn't yeah. it? When I saw the game, I couldn't believe it. It's played on a small area, basketball court sort of size, just by the side. He's, an, he's, <laughs> he's an, got everything, he has, yeah. So what, what different, what's the difference between a normal ball and this ball then? It's only a size two compared to the four or five we'd normally use. Yeah. And the bladder of the ball is filled with foam as well as air, so it doesn't bounce. So the game's just about passing, dribbling, close control. The kids get a lot more touches in, in this type of game. Well done, Kieran. Yes! It's obviously not as great for control from the air and uh, heading, volume and what have you, but you pick up that in other parts of your training. But Even watching this, you can see the, the people, the players uh, wanting to pass and wanting to dribble all the time. So. That's something that, that you don't see as much in our game at the minute as, as players taking people on, so it looks as if it, it encourages that anyway. I eventually went out to Brazil and met with Pelé, Zico, Rivellino, and all of these guys the same. Ronaldo too, had just played this as kids and a tribute to all of their, their skills um, to the game. So the idea is keeping the ball along the ground? On the floor, exactly. I mean, like your, the, the famous five sides at Liverpool, I don't know if they still do them. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it's a similar idea. that. As, as you've just said to me, all of the, the skills that you get in a game come out in this type yep. of environment and uh, it's a great way for kids to learn and a, and a fun way as well. You've seen football de Salon, now you're going to see mini soccer. The main difference being the size and weight of the ball. So this uses a size 4 junior ball and it's something the FA have, have tried to push with children. Um, getting the clubs of under 9, 10 and 11 to play on a Sunday rather than the 11 side game. And again, like football de Salon, they're getting more touches. It's probably not as strong as football de Salon on the passing and, and dribbling, but... I hope you got that one on camera, Joe. In this game, you can open up a little bit more on variety of shots, um, volleying, they can play longer passes. So this is really important as well. And uh, It's another game that brings great benefits for the kids. They shouldn't be too worried about winning these games, even on a, even on a Sunday for the clubs, because uh, that, all of that can come later, can't it? Yeah. That's right, I think uh, the winning after the game, you, you know, you, I think you've got to be disappointed if you do lose, and you've got to go out trying to win, but I think the be-all and end-all is, is this is all being groomed for a player to, to actually make it in the end, and, and that's when you, you know, you've got to be a winner when you're doing it for a living. Um, I think it's, it's nice to have that, that attitude, but as you say, the performance of the player is the main thing at this, at this level, in this age. Go on, on your own! <laughs>I think it's important to get away from the game. You know, some people read, some people watch telly. I like to, to go and have a relaxing game of golf, play table tennis, play snooker, and that takes my mind totally off it. I've always, you know, played games and, and always wanted to win. Um, you know, I'm not, the, not a brilliant golfer by any means or a brilliant snooker player. I've always been brought up, you know, wanting to win and being disappointed if I lose. He's from a family of uh, two other brothers and uh, two sisters. And within a family like that, there's always competition. Mike was the youngest of the brothers and I think the youngest has always got to look after himself. They play golf, snooker, football as well, so um, I think striving to get as good as them maybe you know, help develop me in a quicker, quicker manner. My dad Terry was also once a professional footballer, playing for Everton, Bradford and Chester. My dad's been important right the way through my career. Um, 
He's not pushed me into doing anything I, I don't want to do. He's been brilliant. I can regard my dad as, you know, my best mate. He's, you know, I play golf with him, play snooker with him, and share all, you know, my secrets with him. Well, the 50-year-old's there, and the 19-year-old's is down there, so it just shows he's passed it a bit. It's a score to count, isn't it? Not the distance. Can't have my dad beat me on camera. <laughs> Lucky dad. Unlucky. It's a half. Great shot. Killed that fellow at the back of the green. Thank you. Well done. Another 50p you won't we? I did a bit of boxing when I was about um, 11 and 12. Um, my dad, my dad just put the suggestion to me. Um, I think he knew the, the man who, who run the boxing club. What Terry asked us to do was to develop Michael's strength because as a youngster he was being pushed off the ball a lot by bigger defenders. He realised that boxing would give him a, a good self-confidence mm -hmm. which he could, would apply on the, on the football field. Michael had two contests for us in the space of 12 months and um, he won both contests quite easily. I was only 11 as well so it's, it's hard to knock anyone out at that age. Yeah. But you know, I come out of the, the ring with a bloody nose and whatever, so it was it was a tough sport and it was it was great fun. We went down to Cornwall. Uh, while we were down there, we went we went fishing. Um, we'd never done it before, so uh, we thought we'd go out on a boat. First time I actually dangled my rod, I caught this mad redfish. Um, I think it was a gurnard. Hey, what have I got? Ah, look what I've got! <laughs> Back. Yeah, we're back. That's red garter. They've already they got they got a lot of spike. I would have seized the the last place I was gonna get and ask for an autograph. A, a boat flew past and, and managed to notice me. Anyway, he managed to pull the boat up alongside ours and I gave him the autograph. But you know, I thought I was I was safe from from all autograph hunters. But you know, even I would have seen you get. Asked. But after that, then we caught a few uh, mackerel. Um, they were coming. Know, coming out the sea by the dozen, and then the main fisherman caught a sea bass, and as he got it on his on his rod, and he knew th something was big, so he, he called me over to try to to hook it in. Keep the water. <laughs> and then I had a few pictures taken with it because it was probably the the biggest fish that I've I've certainly caught. Put it on there, we'll put it back on so you can come water or no? That's what I thought. By the way. And here's Overmars! That's brilliantly done. Jamie Carrigan. Strikers get a lot of the headlines, but defending is just as important. Here with me is my roommate, teammate and best mate, Jamie Carragher, who's going to tell us the key to defending. Well, the first key is obviously learning how to tackle. And we're now hopefully going to show you how to do it. Football is all about possession. Here, Roy Keane's tackle turns defence into attack. Burst of pace, the bottom of the determination to win the ball, and here's Dwight Jones. And then Sol Campbell saves the day for Spurs. In football, you can't do anything without the ball, so tackling is essential to win it back. Jamie Redknapp's timely intervention sets me up to lay on a goal for teammate Robbie Fowler. So Jamie, what's the first tackle you're going to show me? The first tackle is going to be the block tackle. It's important that you get your body weight behind it and be strong. On the hand, don't let pass. Oh, well brilliant. done, well done, well done, Kev. Strong tackle. You won't get hurt if you do it properly. That's good tackling, that. Come on then, Steve. Can you score a goal? You got to stop him, aid. Block well tackle. Oh, oh, great wow. tackle. Knocked him off his feet. And even scored a goal. Well done, aid. Go down, oh, four in. Ooh. Oh, foul. You okay, four in? <laughs> good Three tackle, kick. Katie. <laughs> a yellow card for Katie, I feel. You just come in a little bit too quick, you just got to slow down before you get there, a couple of yards off and then just jockey. Just come in the tackle, win the tackle then. But it was a good skill, it was a foul. Go on, have another go. So try to jockey this time, Katie. Don't dive in straight away, wait for your moment to tackle. When she's lost control of the ball, OK? Go on. It's a bit too far ahead of her tackle. Slow down, jockey now, go on. Ooh. That's OK, it's gone out of play. Well done, you put her off. 
That's it. Don't let her pass, Kieran. Well done, Kieran. Well, well, well done. Team. Defend for your life, Kieran. The next tackle we're going to do is going to be the stab tackle. For your players, for your opponents, got half a yard on you, you need to come across. Obviously, you won't keep possession, but it's going to stop your opponents. Let him go down the line. Well done, I'll drop him, I'll drop him. Good, good stab, well done. That's it. So, you tackle, Mike? Ooh. Dives in. So, where did he go wrong there, Jamie? Well, again, he's come in a bit too quick, and then he's, uh, he's dived in instead of uh, getting side on and staying on his feet, but he's also a good bit of skill. Okay. So, let's do it again then. So stay jockeying in, Mike. Don't dive in. Stand up. Keep well done. Go That's on, it. Tackle. I'm going to stab in. Well done. done. It's one of the tackles we've been talking about. Sometimes good defensive play means not making an immediate tackle. Here, Yap Stam steers Martin Pringle of Charlton into the corner, bides his time until reinforcements arrive, and then makes his move. Staying on your feet isn't always possible. Lucas Radaby has to go to ground to stop an almost certain chance on goal. The next tackle we're going to do is going to be the sliding tackle where the opponent's got a couple of yards on you. It's a last ditch attempt because you should always try and stay on your feet when you're defending. And it's important that you don't come through the back of people so you've got to come at the side and time it well. Some tackles are breathtaking. Just watch Sol Campbell. As in many aspects of the game, timing is crucial. A false move can mean a penalty and a red card. Here, David Wetherill spot on. What a great challenge from David Wetherill. Come on, don't let him score. Oh, well done. Good tackle. That's it. Your life's, got to Your life's got to depend on it. You don't let them oh, score. On. Go on, on Regan. Can keep you going. stop him scoring? Oh, unlucky. Bit too quick, Kieran. Give her a chance, will you, little fella? Okay, come on, Michael, then. Go on, get tackle Last ditch oh, tackle. tackle. Great tackle. He was about good to tackle. score there, that's the one. Go on, get across. Oh, Great well tackle. Done. Got him out. Just about to score a goal there. It was last ditch tackle, well done. Any more? Come on, then, Steve. Go on, Stop him scoring. Scores. Well done. Oh, well done, Steve. Oh, Great brilliant. tackle. Best. Have some of that, Michael. I've been looking forward to this for ages. It's one of the most spectacular sights in the game, but it's also one of the hardest to get right. They come from all angles. The volleys don't always have to be blasted. Placed volley is just as effective. But for sheer entertainment, you can't beat a good volley. We start with hitting the ball out of our hands to develop timing and accuracy. I've got the gang working in narrow lanes to focus their minds. As you progress, you can develop your own ways of getting the ball airborne. Joe and Stephen are certainly having fun. As for Kieran, he's in a world of his own. Right, we're now going to be volleying into a goal. Um, Simon's going to be crossing the ball over with his hands. The important things are that we've got to keep our knee over the ball at all times to keep the ball down. We don't want to be hitting it into the stand. Um, the timing's crucial. He's going to be throwing them in at different paces, so if it comes in quite fast, then we only have to guide the ball into the net. If it's a slow one, then we've got to put the pace on ourselves. Um, so let's see how we go now, if Simon throws a few in. <laughs> you got no chance there, Kev. 
<cười> Rồi Quên I just love volleying. Poor old Jamie has no chance. Three key points to remember then. Timing is crucial and you don't have to swing your foot ridiculously hard. Keep your eye on the ball the whole time. Keeping the knee of your kicking leg over the ball will enable you to keep the ball down. Jamie surrendered. I'll let the gang have a go. Great strike Kev. Keep your eye on the ball, that's it. Well done Kieran, same again. Well done Mike. Well done Steve, good power. Well guided, that's the one, a soft one you can guide in. Well done Foreen. Well timed. Way. <laughs> Don't do that. Well done, Steve. That's it. Keep your eye on the ball. Lucky Daniel. I'm well done for in. Well guided. If you put it in the corners, no keeper's going to get it. Just like that, for in. Well done. Great strike, that's it. You concentrate on keeping your knee over the ball there, Mike. That was good. Well done, Foyne. If you can just, be, as, as the ball comes in, if you can just adjust your body, so if you see it's coming back, you've got to get back quick. As soon as the ball comes, you've got to know where it's going to come. So you step back and then play the ball. So if you can look where the ball's going to go as soon as it leaves his hand, and you can adjust your body and move your feet quickly to get there, then you'll be able to make it, the volley much easier. So if you want to try it again for him, Simon throws the ball into you and just move your feet quickly to get in line with the ball. That's it, move your feet. That's it, you went and met it, that was perfect, well done. We're now going to make this more realistic by Simon actually crossing the ball from out wide. It's now vitally important that you concentrate on where the ball's going before he even kicks it really. As soon as the ball comes across, your feet have got to be moving towards where the ball's going to go. So again, keeping the knee above the ball and concentrating on the timing of the ball. Go on, Simon. So you've got to be stepping back. See the line of the flight as soon as you can. So that's a long one. Oh, no. Leaning back on the ball, see? I've got a left foot, see? <sighs> they say that giving a Brazilian a free kick on the edge of the box is like giving them a penalty. They're that deadly. But we've got players in the Premiership who are just as impressive. At Liverpool, Jamie Redknapp takes our free kicks. At the end of training every day, he spends time practicing his free kicks and that's the only way to get better. Inks taps it through Berger's legs, the shot comes in, into the back of the net, Jamie Redknapp and Liverpool take the lead. And it looked like a free kick straight from the training ground. It's not just young footballers who are baffled by the mysteries of free kicks. Sports engineers have spent hours trying to work out why a ball spins, dips or swerves. They've used computers to simulate the effect of striking the ball at different points and over certain distances. Their research 
and the laws of physics have proved what every free kick expert knows, that it's easier to curve the ball if you kick it slightly off centre with the front of the foot. The amount of swerve depends on how hard the ball is kicked and the distance it travels. It's only as the ball slows that the sideways spin takes over, causing the ball to curve. For that reason, blasting the ball towards goal may surprise the keeper, but will leave little time for the spin to take effect. When you're taking a free kick, the keeper invariably stands around the centre of the goal. So the trick is to try to either bend it over the wall into the near top corner, or if the keeper's shuffled across to my right, try to uh, pull it across into the left hand top corner. So we'll just have a go at trying to bend it over the wall. To get movement into the ball, you hit the ball on the outside either way. I'm trying it with me, the inside of the foot to try to bring it from right to left, just to make it harder for the keeper. Also, when you're trying to go over the, over the wall, you want dip on the ball, because uh, you don't, obviously you don't want to go over the bar. So you do that by trying to hit the bottom of the ball first and trying to flick your foot over the top of it to create topspin. And if you can do that with put and swerve on the ball as well, then you become a master at free kicks. I've scored a free kick. <laughs> What's the worst injury you've had? The worst injury I had was my hamstring injury when I, when I played against Leeds. And suddenly I just felt something ping in the back of my leg and, and it shot me into the air and then just, I just fell over and it just felt as if I'd been shot in the back of the leg. So that was probably the, f uh, the worst one when I tore my hamstring. First, it, it wasn't too painful. Um, later on that night, it was it was sore, and, and the next morning, I went to um, you know one of the top specialists in the in the country to to check out what it was. But um, I think we all had a, a clear idea that it was a, it was a hamstring tear. He's a very patient patient, but he's he's paid me to say that, um, and he's he's no problem. I think it's come at the end of um, a long hard season, so this treatment is geared to break the scar tissue down. Very deep local pressure which is quite painful. Not just for him but for me. Mm -hmm. I was in the first team and I was, I was playing well and I'd just come back from the World Cup. It was all going great but you know I, I expected it. It's, it is part and parcel of the game that you're going to get injured and going to suffer a loss of form. People ask me the question that you know what are you going to do if, if something bad happens and I think it's important to look at it as a positive way. You don't take anything for granted when you're injured because you, th you, you think how lucky everyone is to be playing and fit and, and running around. The idea of this obviously it quickens the healing process. Um, it's a very localised beam of um, activity that's going to hit right on that sore spot. We went down to Cornwall for the, for the main reason of, of strengthening my hamstring back up. Um, the physio was down there on holiday. I don't think his uh, wife's going to be too happy with me. And he's been uh, able to get away for two weeks. I'm getting treatment twice a day for an hour. I think I've spoiled his family holiday. This, unfortunately, for the player, is the most painful form of treatment because it's very deep and very pressurised. How does that feel for you? Painful. Very painful. You can't get away from it. It's a fact of, of football that you're going to have injuries and you're going to have loss of form. I mean, you're not going to go out on a Saturday and score three goals every week. You've got to be positive and you've got to deal with it. Now, some people say that jugglers belong in a circus, but I know someone here that would disagree. What are your thoughts on juggling, Simon? Well, juggling is probably the best way to improve your first touch, which is important for all players on the field, no matter what position. Vital for a striker. Um, with juggling, you can do it on your own, and you're getting so many touches, or in pairs. And the great thing about it is that there's virtually no limit as to what you can do with the ball. Some of the children will show you now. Right then, so are you going to show me? Yeah. 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 Off you go then.
I've always found that juggling has improved my confidence on the ball. My advice is to practice, practice, practice. But the gang really impressed me with their vast array of trickery. Yeah, let's get the camera on this one. If you can get it over that pad, over your head with that one, and then back with the outsides like that. That's it. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Legs he's, doing, he's, doing, he's doing it all with the outside of his box. <laughs> You're getting that one. Forehead, nose, mouth. And then he swallows it at the end. Yes. It's the boy. You can do everything, can you? Okay. Give a round of applause. Shearer has scored once from this very same penalty spot in normal time. Can he do it again? He can! With more and more cup competitions being decided on shootouts, the spot kick is now more important than ever. As I know all too well. It's Owen, and it's in. 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> you know, my keepers can come out on top sometimes, you know. Nah, he got lucky. By the way, this is Big Neville Southall, one of my heroes. How many penalties do you think you've saved in your career, Nev? About 50%. All right then, let me have a go against you then. Let's go. Before facing Big Nev, I needed some inspiration from some Premiership penalty hot shots. When you're taking a penalty, you've obviously got a, a goal to aim at, so you can put the ball more or less wherever you want. You've got two options as regards to pace. You can either hit the ball hard and hope that he, he dives out the way, straight down the middle, or you can place it and go for accuracy. Um, I tend to, to go for accuracy um, by hitting the ball with the, the side of my foot. If 
I think the, the best place to put it, if you can, is right into the top corner. No keeper in the world will save it. Equally, in the bottom corner, there's not many that will get down to that either. Michael Owen from the penalty spot. What you take is more that's in your favour, isn't it? Yeah. Why is that? The more you take, the more you can go either side. Believe me, I know. <laughs> I won't argue. Because usually people have a set thing in their minds. Yeah. I normally go in that corner. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can try and read people. Yeah. But after the, what, after five or six, it becomes... Guessing game. Well, they change their way of thinking as well. But it's when the same for you. me. I'm thinking, right, where's he going to go? Because when I take a penalty, I think, what way will the keeper not go here? You do you? I will now. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the money on? Fowler for you, uh, him for you, yeah? South Hall for you. Are you going to check it on the spot then? <laughs> Ready? <laughs> First blood Owen. <laughs> it was always going to be one of them. Yeah. So we went to dive then, but he stood on his feet. Yeah, but it went down late but early. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> it was so bad it went in. Behind you, behind you. <laughs> I'll save this one now. Nah. No? Oh. Beauty. You gonna keep giving me that little look into the opposite <laughs> corner? <laughs> He's sussed it. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that, are you? You're stalling. You go early. Right, well, Neville's listening in, so there's a lot of mind games between the penalty taker and keeper at this stage. I've put a lot of the a lot of the penalties to, my, to his right hand side, so I think I'm going to put it to his left this time and hopefully he goes the wrong way. I have saved 50% of my penalties by uh, watching their body angle and the way they come across the ball. And what I've noticed with Michael, he looks in one corner and plays it the other so far. And he's tried to put one down the middle, so I think I'll just stand here this time and see which way it goes. But I'll start trying now. Oh, which way is he looking? <laughs> 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 He's had a lot of both ways as well, I don't know. <laughs> Get in there. We've reached injury time, but before the final whistle goes, I thought we'd have a kickabout so the gang here can show you what we've learned over the last 90 minutes. Off you go. So Michael and Richard to set us on our way. Perfect conditions here at the Britannia Stadium. Well, Katie, can this you is Andrew in? quickly well showing us what Michael taught us about dribbling. Well done, but that's Kev. a good stab tackle there from Kevin. If you need. Sets Damien away. And there's good support here from Michael Owen. Good Go movement on. off the ball for him from his teammates. This is little in? Kieran Brown. What can he do? Steve's He's up against his older Unlucky. brother and Michael. Oh! A little Meg there. Uses both feet to get out of trouble. That's marvellous. Makes it look very easy. And great balance as well. But a good stab tackle from Stephen can clear the danger. But real impish skill here from Michael. First the nutmeg, then one, two. See you later. Unlucky. Go on, Kieran. Now can Kieran Brown. Him? What can he do now? Well done. Oh, great oh, dummy, Kieran. Great dummy, yes. Teasing cross. I even fell for that one, Kieran. So did I, Michael. I so did me. I. I think we all fell for that one. Kieran Brown, marvellous step over. Now, Adrian, he's in a tight spot, but I fancy he'll get Force out of it. Here, oh, he does. That is great skill Force from young here. Adrian. And a lovely flick from Joe, and Adrian touch, goes Joe. past Michael as if he wasn't there. And he can create space. This is Joe. Well done, what Steve. a good ball. challenge from Stephen. Yeah. Stayed on his feet and didn't dive in. Well, we're witnessing some quite delightful football here. There seemed no way out for Adrian, but in a flash, he was gone and on his way. And then look at this for a lovely touch from Joe. Now this is Michael Brown, great balance again, finds Reagan, and she can find Michael Brown, 
and it's opening up here for Yellows. This is Andrew. It's going to be Joe. He won't. It's 1-0 to Yellows. Great ball with the outside of his boot from Michael. Andrew nipped in ahead of Jamie. And Joe, cool as a cucumber. Now, what can the Blacks do in reply? They've got a corner. It's going to be Stephen yeah, 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 taking yeah. it and floated in towards Kevin. 1-1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The That's reply was instant. Great ball in from Stephen. Lent back to create again. height. And Kevin, eye on the ball, header down. Perfect header. Andrew now can put Joe away here. It's going to be Joe. He's clear on goal. Great what save. a great save from Jamie. It was an inch perfect ball in from Andrew. Joe was onto it in an instant. The shot was good, but look how Jamie stands his ground. Great stuff. Well done, Foreen. You made him go back. This is Simon. It's a raking pass looking out. Good it's on to Andrew from Reagan. Now, what can they do here? This is going to be Reagan. Bit of trickery out there on the right. Good link up play towards Michael. 2 1. But did that come off Joe? Is Joe claiming that one? I think he is claiming it. It looks like it's Joe's goal. It comes in from Andrew and Michael. Yes, Joe's goal. It's the type of goal Michael Owen would claim. Well done, Foreen. Foreen out to on, Katie. Katie. Well done. Now, can she put Daniel away here? It's opening up. It's opening up towards Kieran. Great effort, Kieran. Just wide. That's it back across the goal. That's right. It was a big good, good effort. Just wide. Well done, Steve. Well cut out. Stephen cuts it out very nicely. Oh, not the best of passes. Kieran, lovely step over. But Kevin is very, very solid. And immediately sent Kieran away. Just wide again. Little Kieran Brown is having a great game. The ball in, chipped once again with backspin from Kevin. Hard to control, but he made a great effort. Go on, Kieran. Can you get it? Oh, Kieran, well done. terrible defending from and Simon and Kieran Brown can set Kieran, Kieran. Kevin away. Well, it must be two-two. Two. Is it? No. Yes. yes. Well, two Kieran. apiece. Yeah, we'll up, yeah. It was terrible defending from Simon and Kieran was onto it in a flash. And there was only going to be one winner when this ball came back off the post. Kevin. Two-two. Two for Kevin. Two for Joe. Both on a hat trick. This is That's Adrian again. Now what can he do? He's had a marvellous game as well. And a little battle developing here between him Go and on, Kieran. Kieran. What's going to happen here? Well done. Not <laughs> I've done it. He's done it. Let's take that one out again. I'm not the two foot tall lad. It would seem impossible, but Michael Owen has not made a two foot tall lad. Yes, Steve. Now, Stephen can get Kieran away here. He's under pressure. He's having to work out space on the, on the left-hand side out wide. Daddy! Plays it back to Daniel. He looks up. Good Back's ball. been passed Real through two. towards Stephen. Oh, Just effort. wide. Great Bastion. effort. Going to put it in that far corner. Yes, as Michael points out, Van Basten-like. Lovely backspin from Daniel. Beautiful pass. And it could have been one Stephen told his grandchildren about. Oh, that's lovely Samba skills there from Simon, but he's in trouble. It's out to Michael Brown, composed. He's running through. Don't let he's him round, score. He's round Kevin. Don't he's let round him everyone. Score. They've scored. It's 3 2. The lad that got nagged scores the winning goal. Yes, sweet revenge there for Kieran. A lovely run by Michael Brown once more. And Kieran Phelan, when it comes to him, instinctive and unstoppable. Well, I'm afraid the rest blown for time. I hope after watching this video, you've learned how to become a better player. But just before we go, there's one more important thing, the warm down. Tell them why, Doc. The reason you should do a warm down is to stop you becoming stiff and sore the next day. Let's go back to our car engine again. When you turn off the engine, the unburnt petrol and oil will over time cause damage. It's the same with our bodies. During strenuous exercise, blood is pumped through muscles. If you suddenly stop, the excess blood and toxins have nowhere to go and will make you stiff the next day. 
For that reason, athletes always warm down with a series of light exercises to burn off the toxins that cause stiffness. That's it from us. Enjoy your football and remember, keep practicing. Bye. Bye.